Hi there, hope you're well. In this video I'm going to be making a rolling base for my stack of sustainers or any other stackable toolbox. Now I've been a fan of sustainers and stacking toolboxes for quite a while. Uh, got me really organised when, when I was back in the fitted furniture business, getting all my tools arranged into a stack like this and putting them onto a roll base made it much, much easier for getting in and out of people's houses. Uh, even now I'm not in the fitted furniture business anymore, I still find stacks of sustainers useful just for general storage. But the truth is, at 35 or 40 pounds, these roll bases were always a little bit of an indulgence. These Days, they're closer to 70 or 80 pounds and I could do with another three or maybe even four of them and there's no way I'm going to spend that kind of money. But I reckon I can make one really cheaply from just some scraps of birch ply and a set of 10 pound casters off Amazon. So that's what I'm going to do. Now because I need three or four of these I'm going to make a template and then I'm going to cut around that with a router. If you only need the one then you're probably not worth your while doing that. They don't even have to be the same shape. But mine's going to be based around the same shape as the original Festool one here and I'm going to get cracking on making that template now. I'm using 12mm MR MDF for the template and I've drawn around the Festool board to get the basic shape and then mark the centres of the hole saw I'll be using. This one's a 75mm or 3 inch which is a little small but close enough for me and for the casters that I've got. Next I can mark the approximate centres with an awl and then I can try and burn my way through with a hole saw. Yeah, maybe we'll try a slightly sharper hole saw. You'll find it easier if you have a go at it from both sides, by the way, and cleaning the teeth and the hole saw regularly helps to keep it cutting cleanly. With the holes cut out, I can trim the template down along the pencil lines with a track saw, and then clean up the inside edges of the cutouts with a bit of sandpaper. The hole saw discs have a slight burr on the edges that can be taken off against some sandpaper. And then I can glue the discs back onto the template with some 5 minute PU adhesive. I'm using PU adhesive because the discs, of course, are a little smaller than the cutouts and the PU foams up slightly as it dries and helps to fill the gaps. I'm just holding the discs in place with tape and I'm leaving the whole assembly on a scrap of paper with a cover board and weighted down to keep it flat while the glue dries. And once dry and the tape removed I can give it a quick scrape and clean it up with a bit of sanding. So that's our, plywood, uh, our MDF template. Uh, these joins aren't going to be particularly strong, but they don't need to be because we're going to screw this down in three positions onto the sub base, onto the plywood. Then we can run the router around it to trim it back. Okay, so this is our blank sort of baseboard. I've trimmed this back roughly with the track saw, mostly to prove that it can be done with a track saw. If you've got something better, a jigsaw or a bandsaw, then by all means use that. But it's absolutely doable uh, with a track saw. You just need to finish off the inside corners with a little Japanese pull saw or something like that. Obviously, the plan of the idea behind this is to get as close as possible to the line, so we're only trimming a relatively small amount back, two or three mil something like that and the bit that I'm going to use uh, is this one it's a trend one this one and this happens to be uh, a double flush trimming bit because it's got a bearing top and bottom so you can use it that way around in a router handheld as I'm going to or that way up in a router table as well uh, so anyway that's the blank made I'm going to screw the template down on top of that and then we can get some routing done
So that's our baseboard, looking pretty good. A lovely clean finish off that router bit. Very impressed with that considering it's a full depth of 18mm and a single pass, very nice. Um, incidentally I'm going to be doing a video or a video series about routers and routing so let me know in the comments if you've got anything specific that you'd like covered. But that's our basic baseboard done. Uh, I'm going to clean this up with a little light sand on both sides then we can get the casters fitted. I've just got some some uh, basic little eight or nine pound for a pack of four casters off Amazon. Links in the video description. Uh, I'm just going to screw them onto the base. If you think they're going to bear a much heavier load or be moved around, lifted in and out of vehicles a lot, then I'd suggest you bolt them through. But for this sort of lightweight, just sliding a stack of sustainers under a bench, uh, screws are fine. And I use just a 16 by four mil self tapper type of screw just to fit them on. Uh, but anyway, quick sound and then we'll get those fitted and then we'll see about fitting the sustainers onto the baseboard. Okay, so that's our roll board doing what roll boards do. Uh, the next challenge is to get our sustainer attached onto it. And if you're using the T-lock sustainer, like these ones, that's with the front catch. These are the newer versions. Um, ooh, hello. <laughs> deal with that later. Um, then you're in luck because you can actually buy 3D printed catches for these which will attach to your base which will just slot in and lock down. Uh, I'll leave a link in the video description to those. If you're on the classic sustainer like me then it's a little bit more challenging. Um, you could buy the little green things uh, as a festal spare part. They're about a tenner. Uh, but then they're only designed to fit into a plastic base that's a few mil thick, so you'd have to figure out some way to attach them. Um, I'm just going to screw this down. I don't need to swap the bases between sustainers or anything like that. These are just for storage in here. Uh, and if you look at the inside of the sustainer, there's a little ridge where the feet are, and that's perfect for either a washer or a little sort of repair plate like this kind of thing. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pop that in there and screw those down so that the base is nice and solid and that's gonna spread the weight fine. I'm, I'm never gonna lift this up by its handle when it's really heavy. I always lift it up by the base. So that's gonna work out really nicely. So there we are, that's our super simple little plywood roll base for your stack of sustainers or any other stacking toolbox, of course. Uh, if you put the classic on the base, you can, of course, add a T-lock sustainer on top of that because they just latch on as usual. Whereas if you do put a, a T-lock in the base, then you can't fit a classic on top of, on top of the T-lock. Just something to bear in mind if you do have mixed sustainers. But I'm going to leave you there, I think, for this week. It really is a very simple uh, little project. Um, as I said, I, I made a template because I need a, a few of these. It makes sense to make a template uh, and just route them out that way around. Whereas if you just needed one, then you could just jigsaw that shape out or do it on a bandsaw or just a track saw and not do the, the curved edges. That's just sort of affectation, really. But it's a, a very, very simple and very effective little solution. Uh, obviously, nothing like as sophisticated as the Festool original, but nothing like the 70 or 80 quid that they charge uh, for the current roll boards either. Uh, scrap of plywood and four little casters for eight or nine pounds and a little bit of your time, and you're in business. I'll leave it there for this week, though. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, thanks, of course, to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members for their amazing support. And while my Patreon and YouTube member credits roll. I'm going to leave you with a little bit more of that slow motion routing action. But that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one, okay?